The Renault Megane E-Tech 100% battery electric SUV has finally hit Australian shores. I'm down at my local Renault dealer at Springwood here in Brisbane and I'm at the grand unveiling of the vehicle tonight. So we're going to jump inside shortly, we'll have a look at a presentation, we'll have a look around the car and I'm going to tell you guys all about it. It's a really nice looking EV and I'm sure it'll sell well in Australia. Well, welcome to Electric Car Australia. My name's Greg, and let's head in. Well, we're inside the showroom now, and as you can see, there's a nice crowd of people behind us. We've got the Queensland Renault Owners Club, so there's a lot of um, existing Renault owners that have come along tonight to check out the new 100% battery electric vehicle. We've obviously also got some um, potential customers, and I believe we've got about um, nine vehicles here tonight, and some of those are already pre-sold. So we'll be shortly having a presentation from Renault, so some of the corporate marketing, and then of course we'll unveil the car, and I'll see if I can get a good look around the car, show you guys inside and out, and we'll go through some of the statistics. So yeah, really looking forward to, to tonight. It looks like a great event. Uh, I believe there was about 50 uh, people attending tonight from the general public and also the Renault Owners Club. Before we begin, well, I'd like to begin today by acknowledging the uh, Ugaral people, the uh, traditional custodians of the land in which we meet. Um, pay my respects to their elders past and present, and I extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people that join us here today. Without further ado, uh, let's begin the presentation on Renault and Garn. Megane is one of the longest standing nameplates name in the Renault lineup globally. With EV batteries, it's a balancing act. But battery means longer range, but also means weight is less efficient. Renault designs its own batteries, giving it more freedom to ensure fit for purpose. Megane E-Tech's 60 kilowatt hour battery allows 450 kilometer range this equates to about 10 days of driving for the average Australian. The battery is also one of the slimmest on the market, only 111 millimetres, and only weighs 395 kilos. Megane E-Tech offers AC and DC charging capabilities. 130 kilowatt DC charging will give you over 300 kilometres of range in just 30 minutes 
perfect for the longer trips. And a seven kilowatt AC charging will give you a full charge overnight at home in around 10 hours with a basic wall box that uh, you, you can have installed for the perfect day-to-day -day charging. So tonight's been really successful for Renault. It's been so busy actually, I've had to go to plan B so I can't actually get um, enough time in the car to record the video. Um, I have had a good look around the car and I've had a good look inside as well, but unfortunately I couldn't get to sit in it to film the video. So look, what I'm gonna do is go through some uh, stats and, um, and then I'll just have a uh, general conversation around what I think of the car, fit and finish, all that sort of stuff. So as I mentioned, this is the new Renault Megane E-Tech. It is built on a dedicated EV um, platform, which is great to see. Um, it is classified as an SUV and it's a full five seater. Um, there's three seat belts in the back and there's also three headrests as well. So I'll show some of the footage I shot before, some screenshots and also a little bit of B-roll from Renault um, as I'm talking so you'll get a look and feel for it. The car is a front wheel drive. Now in Europe there's actually four models of this vehicle but at the moment Renault's only bringing one model to Australia and pretty much it's the uh, third highest um, model, so the highest range model in Europe, just has a few little extra bits and pieces, some uh, leather trim and that sort of stuff. So that one's not coming to Australia, but as far as the specifications, this one is the top. It's 220 horsepower electric motor or around 160 kilowatts. Um, it's got a quoted 450 kilometer WLTP range. So look, in real world, uh, we're looking about 360 uh, kilometres of range, so that's a good size range. And that's out of the 60 kilowatt hour battery. Um, in Europe, as I mentioned, there is a couple of lower models. They have, uh, there's a 40 kilowatt hour battery and they've also got uh, lower powered motors in them. So they've got 130 horsepower motors. Um, but again, they won't be coming to Australia. Um, the battery is 400 volt architecture, which is um, the standard for the majority of EVs, um, particularly in Australia. The battery chemistry is nickel, cobalt, manganese, um, so a slightly more expensive uh, technology and also slightly more energy dense, um, so you get a little bit more um, energy out of those, those batteries. It has type 2 charging, so that's your AC home charging, and at the moment that's a maximum of 7 kilowatts. Now the European models have 22 kilowatts, um, but Renault's decided to only bring a 7 kilowatt version to Australia at the moment. They may revisit that, depending on sales and demand, but just keep in mind 7 kilowatts AC, so that's single phase charging. And that'll charge at about 110 kilometres per hour. So if you plug in for one hour, you'll add about 110 kilometres of range. It's got CCS uh, DC rapid charging, of course, the CCS2 standard. Now that's around 130 kilowatts. Um, so that's a reasonable um, charge rate for a vehicle of this sort of size and price range. And we'll talk about price shortly. Um, but that'll add um, enough charge from 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes, so that's not too bad. The car has five star safety rating, which is fantastic, and it can also tow, so it's rated at 750 um, kilos, unbraked, 
And if you're braked, that's 900 kilos. So that's actually not bad if you've got a little box trailer that you need to, to tow around. Um, one thing it doesn't have is vehicle to load. Now that's a little bit disappointing, I guess. Uh, there is other EVs out there that don't have that feature, but that is a feature that a lot of people are now starting to look at. So at the moment, no vehicle to load. Um, who knows, it could come in a later future model. The efficiency is about 15.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometres, so that's pretty average for a, a vehicle um, of, of this size and nature. Having a look at some dimensions, so it's 4.2 metres long, so it's sort of that um, mid-size bracket, I'd say. It's 1.86 metres wide, it's 1.5 metres high, and the wheelbase is about 2.685 metres. So as you'll see from some of those photos and video, it's got a really nice wide stance, and that of course comes from being a dedicated EV platform. So you can push the front and rear axles right to the, um, to the ends. The gross vehicle max, uh, sorry, the gross vehicle weight is 2.158 tonnes, so just under uh, 2.2 tonnes. Um, the maximum payload of the vehicle is 522 kilos, so that's all the stuff that you can load into the vehicle. Now the boot space, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's class leading. Um, and it was a little bit disappointing. There's not too many pockets and stuff in the boot. There's a couple of um, little hooks in there. It does have a single light in the boot, which is good. Um, it had elastic strings, uh, which isn't a bad idea because sometimes the little parcel trays get hooked on things. Um, so it's good to see that elastic. And we've got some excitement happening over the, the back there. Um, as you'd imagine, this wasn't actually a press uh, night. I should have mentioned that to start with. This was a uh, VIP customer event. Um, so there's people having a great time tonight, having some wine and nibblies and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I didn't want to actually barge in um, being sort of press. I wanted to let those guys have a look. So we'll come back in a couple of months when we've got a vehicle and um, we'll do a more detailed look and I'll be able to show you guys around. Okay, back to the stats. So the cargo volume's 440 litres of boot space in there. Now with the seats down, um, it's got a split rear seat. The max cargo is 1,332 litres, which is okay. There's no front, so as you'll see in the videos, it is a spaghetti of cables and uh, hardware underneath the bonnet. Again, a little bit disappointing. They could do a bit more in the design of that, um, but I'm sure over time that, that will happen. So at the moment, lift the bonnet, nothing under there of usable space. So the warranty on the new Megane E-Tech, it's five years unlimited kilometres on the body, and it's eight years and 160,000 kilometres on the battery. So that'll give you some good confidence um, with the warranty. Again, not class leading, um, but it's certainly up there. The service intervals, now they haven't been announced yet, so Renault Australia is still working through uh, what they look like. They have told me the uh, servicing costs will not be more than an ICE vehicle, and uh, I'd argue they certainly shouldn't be because there's a lot less to service on them, but they don't have the intervals worked out um, yet. So I would say it could be 12 months, 20,000 kilometres, but that's just my, my thinking. Now availability, um, so this is obviously a left-hand drive vehicle they've got on display and this has been going around Australia for these types of events. Um, they've been told that the first right-hand drive vehicles should be leaving the factory in France, so these are made in France, um, this week. So they'll be on freighters and they'll be on their way to Australia. Um, so they're actually taking orders now, so if you wanted to place a deposit, um, basically having a look at one of these vehicles but not actually driving it, you can, so they are taking orders. But availability for pickup will be um, around September, so September, October they should have vehicles here uh, for delivery to customers. Prior to that, these first vehicles that are on the water, or will be on the water this week, there'll be a lot of demo type um, vehicles. And I believe this dealership's got nine of those on order. Um, now you will be able to order those through the dealerships. I'm not sure whether they'll have an online ordering system as well. Um, some uh, 
uh, brands are running hybrids, but at the moment it's a dealership order model. And of course, the price. Now look, the price as well hasn't been fully finalised, but they do tell me it, they're aiming for under 70K drive away. Um, so that's still to be confirmed, but that's what they're aiming for. And there's a few little things that they've done to try and keep it under that price point. I mentioned the seven kilowatt AC onboard charging. Um, that was one of the things that they've mentioned that uh, they've decided to downsize, I guess, to try and keep that price lower um, because it does cost a couple of thousand dollars more to have that higher capacity AC charging. Um, so there's some of the little examples that they've used to try and keep that price at that 70, um, which I think they probably need to do for the vehicle uh, to be competitive in the Australian market at the moment. Um, but keep in mind, depending on the state where you live, there is some EV rebates going, and um, their average is probably around $3,000, so that would come off your drive away price. Well, I must say, I finally got to sit in the Magan E-Tech, close the doors. It is getting a little bit late in the night, so most people have um, headed home for the night. So look, we don't have much time. The guys are looking to close up. So I'll just quickly run through my initial thoughts of the vehicle. So let's start with the cockpit. Now look, I really like this driving position. As I mentioned, this is obviously a left-hand drive car, um, but I really like the, the um, dash here for the driver is uh, obviously not min minimalistic like the, um, the Tesla. And I actually personally like that. I like some of these, um, these dials and buttons. These are tactile buttons. They feel, feel quite nice. You've got a center horn there. Um, over this way, you've got your um, phone, voice, all that sort of stuff. You can change your view there by pressing this button here. And guys, this won't be a detailed review. It's just um, quickly showing you some of the things before we get kicked out tonight. But I really like this steering wheel. It's a leather type feel. Um, it's not, not round. It, it's just a nice driver's wheel. We've got some uh, stalks here, which are nice. We've also got paddles, which uh, not a lot of cars have the paddles. So Good to see that. Paddles left and right. We've got stalks left and right. And we've actually got two stalks here on the right hand side, one on the left hand side. So this might be a little bit of overkill. Um, I'm not sure. I guess you'd get used to it. This is uh, your gear chain. So you've got reverse, neutral, drive, and park. Um, these are your uh, wipers and headlights. Sorry, they're the wipers. Um, over here is, is your your headlights. Um, I've got like the little turbo button here, not sure, I need to do some more thinking on what that one is. That one actually changes your... So that one goes into the menu and changes the um, the energy of the battery, I guess, or your, your power systems. Um, but, but basically it shows you what you need to to see. It's got 90% battery capacity there, 359 um, kilometres. We've got the map up currently, so again we can press this view button and change that. I haven't had any training on this, so don't really know what I'm doing, but we've got two separate screens. There's one here, one in front. These are removable um, air vents here, so hopefully you guys can see that. Um, there's a little um, wireless phone charger there to put your phone in. These are also tactile buttons and this here is touchscreen. So there's certainly a lot of uh, buttons and, and tactile type stuff to, to play with. There's little LED lights 
uh, in these accents so around the, the doors there. Um, these vents under here, I'd say that's quite a French sort of design. Um, so the passenger there gets a lot of good air. Carmen Hardham uh, sound system and that looks like a sound bar across the front. I could be wrong. Actually, I think I am wrong. I think we've got speakers in the left there, speakers in the right. Um, that's an air vent. Um, we've got our SOS, which in Australia I don't think works, doesn't dial the emergency services. But we've got some lights up here. Um, we've got our little mirrors, light there, so that's good. Um, we've got a quite a fancy mirror. That one is a camera for when you're reversing. We've obviously got hooks there. Nice doors. This is uh, soft, soft plastic, so there's not a lot of hard plastic. Harder plastic there. This is a velour type velvety thing. Um, door handles feel feel nice. That's soft, soft inside the pockets down there. This one's plastic. Seats hold you very well. I wouldn't say they're the best seats around, but um, they're certainly probably slightly above average. Adjustable headrests on the seats, which is great. Adjustable. Um, seat belts there we've got electric windows obviously so they're your stock standard sort of windows um, you can see they're a little bit better that's that is a, a actually feels like uh, suede leather um, in there probably not but that's what it feels like um, roof is all good we've got some pockets down here so there's a lot of storage bins down here um, one single cup holder there console here with some good space I don't, don't think it's adjustable, but that's at a nice height. Um, seats are manual seats, so forward, back, up, down, all that sort of stuff is, is manual. So again, that, that keeps the price down. Um, but the sound system's good. I have heard it on before. I like the little yellow, yellow etching in there. So as far as space goes, when I put the seat right back, I can just touch the firewall um, so it, it does have quite a lot of space. That obviously limits the space in the back. When I was sitting in the back, the floor is a little bit higher, as you'd imagine with an EV. This has a 60 kilowatt hour battery. So I think they have packed quite a lot of cells up under the seats as well, because you can't sort of, when you're sitting in the back, tuck your feet in under the driver and passenger seat. And I think the reason is they've probably packed those cells up into that area as well to get them in. But look, in general, it's a nice cab in here. As I mentioned, we've got three adjustable headrests in the back. Um, we've got ISOFIX. I think we've got at least two ISOFIX there. Um, we've got some USB ports in the back, and I couldn't see, it was very dark. But there's, there's at least two in there. I'm not sure whether they're US, uh, B, A, and C, but there's definitely a couple of ports in there, and there is ventilation through to the rear, so that's good. So let's quickly talk about the outside before I get kicked out. But the fit and finish is, is good. Um, the paint looks nice. It's a bit hard to tell under the uh, lights in the showroom here the colour, but it is a nice sort of deep metallic, so that's, that's really good. Um, the car in general has a nice flowing style about it. I like the, actually I like the front and the back end, the side profiles. So I do actually like, like the design of the car and being on an EV platform, again, you've got those axles pushed out. Um, it's on 20 inch wheels, which are massive. They won't be great for economy, um, but they certainly look, look nice on the car. So look, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this first look around the Magan E-Tech, 100% electric. As I mentioned, we'll certainly be having a better look at this, and as usual, there'll probably be a lot more people on YouTube that will do a lot better detailed reviews of the car than me. But it was just down the road from home, so I wanted to drop into the dealership. There are a great bunch of guys down here, so I'll keep in touch with these guys over the next couple of months. And what we'll be hoping to do is get one of these and we'll actually uh, take it out on the road and we'll put it through its paces and I'll be able to give you a bit better of an idea on my practical down-to-earth sort of thoughts on the car. But first impressions is, if this car comes in under 70k as they're hoping for a 60 kilowatt hour 100% battery electric vehicle in quite a nice style like I said not class leading in, in areas but I would say it's above average so I think these will sell quite well.
So thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to flick us a couple of dollars, I'll put the donation links down below. Otherwise, just give us a thumbs up, share the video with your mates. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, I'd really appreciate you clicking that subscribe button. It does help us out. And other than that, thanks for watching. Take care, look after your friends and family, and we'll talk soon. Cheers.